the king must shed its skin four to six times a year. The first sign, its eyes become cloudy. From a milky secretion released to help separate old skin from new. When its eyes clear, it begins shedding. It can take up to 10 days to scrape the used flakes of itchy, irritable skin free. It's an anxious time in the life of a snake. Like all males this time of year, this snake seems to have only one thing on his mind, sex. But our tagged female has already mated and wants only to be left in peace. Unfortunately, she is about to play out a horrifying scene. She is not fully immune to her own kind's venom. And he squeezes her in his vice-like jaws, pumping venom into her bloodstream. Come on, I've got him by the tail. Pull. Whoa, 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 stop, stop! Catching big, venomous snakes can literally be a matter of life and snake, death. Snake, snake, I need the snake tongs! But what if there's a way to catch the animal without entering the danger zone? From a I safe distance. Whoa, whoa. Could a robot catch a snake? To find out, snake expert Brady Barr will tangle with deadly serpents and check out state-of-the-art robots to develop his own snake bot and test it in a dangerous encounter of the slithery kind. You got this snake. In Brady Barr's line of work, he earns his hazard pay. Giant constrictors have wrestled him. He's got my leg. I travel all bitten him what, 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 what? more than once. Ah! 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 Oh my gosh, that's a king cobra. Careful, careful. And he's had many run-ins oh with toxic oh, species. Talking about it. Oh, oh. All too often, finding snakes means worming your way into some kind of claustrophobic crevice. Snake! Snake! Oh! Wait, wait, wait! But I've got an idea that might make my job a lot less stressful. Could Brady use a robot to take over the potentially deadly job of wrangling snakes? His snake bot will have to operate in dark and confined places. It'll need a camera, and he wants to control it from a distance. Brady starts his search for a snake-catching robot down a manhole. I'm in downtown Washington, D.C., getting ready to go subterranean. That's right, I'm headed into the sewers. All right, I'm going down. The Water Authority relies on robots to monitor over 3,000 kilometers of sewer and underground tunnels. Could a sewer robot work as a snake bot? Right. <laughs> Man, it's good to be in the sewer. All right, lead the way, my friend. Okay. You ever come across anything unusual down here? Anybody you ever come across anybody living down here? No, we haven't, animals? We haven't come across any anybody living down here. We do come across animals. Down here. I think uh, the one the one that I can remember is a cow. We saw a cow, a cow? inside the sewer. Good was, gosh. It wasn't living, but <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I was gonna say I wouldn't want to get my milk from that cow. <laughs> sewer milk. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, man, it's slippery over here. Yeah, yeah, sewer right. systems can be dangerous. Man, you don't want to make a misstep here. Uh. Running with rivers Good and waterfalls God. containing human that waste. Is slippery. 
Now, I noticed you got some high-tech gear on. This is a poisonous gas detector? Yes, sir. This here, this here will measure if, if and as uh -oh. you can see. It's going off. That's not good. We're getting a little bit of an alarm here. The fumes can push out breathable air, so they have to monitor oxygen levels. So long story short, this is a dangerous place down here. Absolutely. And that's why the DC Water Authority uses robots to do their dirty work. I hope this is your guy up ahead. Yes, it is. Not some unsavory character down here. <laughs> hey, man, I'm Brady. Hey, Brady, I'm Brunel. Hey, man, oh, that is awesome. Check that out. So this is the sewer bot. <laughs> yeah, this is the sewer bot, aka the rover. So this is what you send down in the sewer to places that you can't go or places that are too dangerous for you to go. Exactly, it's our eye in the sewer. That's exactly what it is. But will it work as Brady's snake tracking robot? See, we got a camera on the front of it that pans and tilts so we can look at different angles in the sewer line, check if a crack. A camera will obviously be vital. Seems heavy. Can I pick it up? Yeah, go ahead. Cool. That is something. Can this thing go under like the sewers, the holes where snakes are found will be pitch black. And I see you got some really bright lights up in the front. LEDs are in the front. So we're in a big pipe now, but the plan is to take the rover and send it down a small pipe, a place we can't go. Okay, let's go. Let's it's time it. to put the rover to work and see just what it's capable of. Okay, hey, hey, hey. no. Tell him what he left. All right, rover. Do your stuff. Go. go, baby. There it goes. All right. Look at it. Man, it's going fast. An extra long tether means they can monitor the video feed from the comfort of a van, safely above oh, yeah. ground. Call me a sewer rat. That's awesome, man. I like it down there. I can't wait to see the video. Oh, there it is. Look at it. So that's the, the view from the rover. Look at it. There it goes. So it's going down that pipe looking for problems, cracks, animals. Anything wrong with the infrastructure of the sewer? Now, what's this white thing, white stuff coming up? That's uh, grease. Grease? That's grease in the sewer lines. We have grease. a lot of grease. Grease builds up. Where's it coming from? Out of people's houses, out of laterals, anything, any cooking food, it just builds up. The sewer robot has the camera and bright lights Brady needs. But in other ways, it's not the perfect snake bot. There aren't many places I go where I'm going to be able to take a big van, a water and sewer authority van with lab technicians to monitor the video. That's just not going to happen. Also, I think that the weight of the rover is just too great. It would bog down in the sand uh, of these aardvark burrows where these snakes are found. I've learned a lot today. This has been good stuff. There's a very different robot that might be just what Brady needs. The Armadillo. Small, lightweight, highly mobile. It's designed for military surveillance. Cameras on all four sides feed video to a screen on the controller. A soldier can safely survey an enemy bunker. It should allow Brady to explore a snake burrow. And its high-tech tires are designed to handle the sandy soil. Next stop, South Africa and giant snakes. Brady's headed to the Kualata Game Ranch, a couple hours north of Johannesburg. The area is riddled with burrows, perfect refuges for big snakes. I hope that the robot will be able to go down these burrows, look around, be my eyes for me, let me know what's in the burrow, let me know if it's safe for me to continue down uh, and get what I'm after. And I'm after big snakes, pythons. In particular, African pythons. They're one of the biggest snake species in the world. Yet they're almost impossible to find. The best place to look is in their burrows. You never know what's going to be inside. Venomous snakes, cobras, puff adders, hyenas, aardvarks, warthogs. If you go down there, you can be rewarded with a giant snake. But you'd also lose your life without knowing what's in those holes before you venture in. So Brady hopes the armadillo can take over as his snake bot. 
exploring the burrows to locate a python. But that's the easy part. Can the robot then drive the snake out so Brady doesn't have to go in after it? The test starts at night. It's winter time in South Africa, where the days can be chilly, but the nights are just downright cold. Way too cold for a giant snake. The snakes may come out and bask in the sun in the day, but at night, they've got to be underground. They've got to be down in the burrows. So I'm thinking that's the best time to find them. Let's send the armadillo down these burrows where the snakes are trying to stay warm. This looks like a good hole. Great. But there's no one home. That is a snake skin. These look like huge belly scales. That's gotta be a python. No snake in Africa gets that big. The robot has found a clue, while Brady remains safe above ground. Where there's a snake skin, there has been a snake. He may still be at home. You can see the burrow continues over here on the right. I'm gonna continue. We're gonna run right over this baby and go find the snake that it came from. Here, the soil changes. You can see where the walls have kind of been broken down or decayed. You can see little crevices, lots of roots. It's a good burrow. Watch it. Snake, snake, snake. We got a snake. We got a snake. The robot has found a snake, we got a snake. but it's not a, a python. Oh, he's moving. That's a puff adder. That's a venomous snake. Oh, that is awesome. That is a monster, too. That is a puff adder. Very, very dangerous snake. If I'm not mistaken, more venomous snake bites are attributed to this species than any other venomous snake in Africa. They inject large amounts of highly potent venom that acts by destroying cells. Puff adders also have a special kind of stealth camouflage. Each scale has a ridge that makes them less reflective. They don't glint like most snakes and are harder to spot. I am not going in that burrow. We're pulling our robot out and we're gonna go to the next burrow. Man, chalk one up to the robot. He could have just saved my life. Brady tries several more burrows, but no luck. He resumes the hunt next morning. Nobody home. We know this is an empty burrow. Let's move to the next one. So far, it's been a bust. I had high hopes for that burrow. Let's move on. Brady decides to try one more hole. It's a chamber. This one's not that deep at all. It just... Whoa, 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 whoa. We have something there, something. It's a snake. Definitely a snake, and it's a python. That is definitely a python. Yes, the robot found it. Now we gotta try to get it out of there. Brady wants to investigate this magnificent and rare animal up close. Can the robot help him to extract it? Before coming to South Africa, Brady came yes. up with a way it robot might just do that. Let's get the animal head on it. Brady's plan is to trick the python and lure it out of its burrow. He was inspired by the growing field of biomimetics using robots to imitate wild animals, like the researchers who used a robotic female grouse to hoodwink males and stimulate mating displays. An onboard camera records the extraordinary courtship dances the robot provokes. If robots can dupe grouse, 
can they fool pythons? Brady recruits expert taxidermist Paul Reimer to disguise his robot as a wild animal that a python could encounter. A jackal. Now, my fake jackal comes into play. I'm gonna bolt this baby onto the top of the armadillo. If the disguise and works, the python could see the jackal as a threat, slither out of the burrow, and Brady can grab it. Or it's going to view the jackal as a prey item. It's going to strike it, put on the big squeeze, thinking that it's a real animal. And while it's squeezing it, I'm going to pull out a ball of python, all coiled around the armadillo and the jackal. All right, the jackal is in place. Then we got to just send it down the hole. Got a bad image. Bad signal. Oh, it's oh yeah. Oh, it's it's turned. It's turned. It's turned. It's looking at the jackal. The jackal appears to intimidate the python. The coiled tail signals that it feels threatened and may be poised to strike. I'm gonna go forward just. I'm gonna creep. A little. Oh! It struck the jackal, but it, it didn't get caught. I'm gonna back up just a little bit. It definitely struck. I got it. Man, it didn't, didn't wrap it up. It looked to me like more of a defensive strike. It wasn't a predatory strike. If it would have been a predatory, he would have held on and wrapped up the jackal. The snake seems tensely aware of the jackal, but it doesn't see it as a serious threat, and it doesn't seem to view it as prey. And now he's, he's in tight coils. His head's in the middle of the coils. All I see is coils. I mean, it's almost an impenetrable fortress. The robot worked in finding the snake but it's not gonna be able to get that snake out of that hole for me. I think I'm just gonna, I'm gonna pull the jackal out. It's going to be harder than Brady thought for a robot to actually wrangle a snake. His snake bot needs an upgrade, but how should he adapt it? To find out what a robot needs to tackle a python, Brady's going to try doing it himself. Which is not something I really wanna do with a giant snake. I mean, that snake is huge. A snake that size could kill a human very easily. <clears throat> I'm gonna go down. I'm gonna suck it up, and I'm just gonna go down. But you guys have, you guys gotta pull me out if I yell. I mean, you've got to be standing by, because this is a tight hole. <clears throat> That's what it's down to. I'm back to square one. Brady Bar's crawling down animal holes again, dangerous animal holes. My family is not going to be happy about this. Dang. Brady's uh. snake tracking robot may have located a python, but he's going to have to go in and get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see his head. It's in the very back. <sighs> You know, the, the problem is the chamber's just not big enough to accommodate me and the snake. I don't know if I can do this. Honest? Yes, but I... You stay close to my feet. Uh, but I've gone. OK. Fellow scientist Hannes Botha will have to pull him out if things go wrong. I can't see the head. He's hissing. Where's the damn head? I hear him hissing. He's looking at us. Where's the damn head? Honest? Yes, but I pull me out. Hang on just a second. Yeah, pull. OK. OK. I don't know if I can do it. Oh, oh! He's coming out over here. He's coming out. He's right on top of the camera. His head's right here. I'm going to go in the other hole and try to grab him by the tail, and I'll pull him out by the tail. Simon, tell me if he moves. Yeah. What the hell? Oh, what's going on? His back coils are moving. His head's coming back into the tunnel. Oh, yeah, I see his head. It's right by his tail. 
His head's right here. Hannes, get ready to pull me, but his head is right next to me. I'm gonna see if I can tong him. Brady uses specialized snake grabbers to try to get hold of its head. It's too strong. So he heads back to the first entrance. Ugh. All right, I'm gonna try to hook its tail. Simon, did anybody else see the head? Pull me back just a little bit. Pull me back slow. Oh, slow. Whoa, 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 whoa. I lost the tail. Pull me back. Slowly, slow. Oh, shoot. This show was created for you and your family to watch together. Welcome to Nacho Wild. Give me the snake stick. Hurry, he's moving, hurry. I'm so close. It's hissing. Let me go in a little bit. He reaches for the tail with his hand. Pull me back slowly. Slowly. I've got him by the tail. Pull. All right, hurry. Hurry. Get me out. Whoa, 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 whoa. Stop, stop. All right, pull me. Pull me. I got him. Wait, 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 wait. Watch the head. Somebody help me grab. Hannes, grab. Somebody grab the snake. I can't hang out. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. You got him? Keep pulling. All right. Whoa, whoa, everybody get back. He's coming out. Help me pull, Hannes. We got him! Man, that thing is a monster! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Watch out! Look at that! That has got to be five meters of python! Man! My heart is going a mile a minute. And these giant snakes are so rare. Every day, there are fewer and fewer of these snakes on the planet because people kill them just out of fear and ignorance. Man, it's always a good day when you catch a giant python, but it's an even better day when you catch a giant python and you don't get bitten. Whew. Woo! The robot successfully tracked down a huge python. But to physically wrangle a snake, Brady's snake bot must be able to actually grab it, especially if it's venomous. One of the most terrifying snake catching scenarios is when a deadly toxic serpent ends up close to humans. It has to be removed or bad things can happen. Just ask the young farmer from a small town not far from Johannesburg. His day started normally enough. But he had no idea that a Mozambique spitting cobra had taken refuge in a broken plumbing pipe outside. It's one of the deadliest snakes in Africa. Its venom literally breaks down your flesh. It's quite comfortable in water. Following the pipe, it emerged through the U-bend of his toilet. And bit him in the last place a man wants to be bitten. Fortunately, he survived, his manhood more or less intact. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Careful. No, That's why venomous snakes have to be kept away from people. But handling a deadly snake is like handling a bomb. One false move can be your last. Today, Incredibly sophisticated robots are used to defuse bombs. Could something like this make an effective snake bot? 
To find out, Brady checks in with John Bilski of the Pennsylvania State Police Bomb Squad. I want to find out more about what these robots are capable of to see if I can actually use them to go in a house and remove an incredibly dangerous snake. I like this little guy in, in the back of the truck there. We'll bring him out for you. Oh, look at that. That is awesome. Which robot is this? This is the i robot. Look at that. That is incredible. It investigates several suspicious package calls each month. Like the sewer robot, it has a live feed camera on board. But it has something else that Brady's snake bot will need a mobile arm and gripping claw. <gasps> the claw enables it to access the back of the car and remove what could be a bomb. The i has one other function that Brady's hopefully not going to need. Brady's not planning to blow up any snakes, but the robot is obviously capable and could be the foundation of his snake bot. The bomb diffusing robot suggested a design for my snake bot, a mobile base, a maneuverable arm with a gripper on the end. However, the robot I used to capture snakes is gonna have to be a whole lot faster and more dexterous. I'm hoping the guys here at HDT will have what I'm looking for. Brady's about to shake hands with one of the most sophisticated robotic arms on the planet. Hey, Tom. Brady Barr. Hi. Hey, pleasure. So this is it. This is it. Unbelievable, that's all I can say. I mean, this is going to be the snake bot. And this is what we're going to utilize to try to keep me out of a very dangerous situation. Yes, this is the arm that's going to try to catch that snake. And, and this, this is, is the Mark I okay, manipulator. The Mark I manipulator. It emerged from a project to design a robotic arm that could be used as a prosthetic limb. Uh, it's designed to have a lot of dexterity, so it has basically all the same motions of a human arm. It's like the uh, I-Core uh, bomb uh, disposal robot, capacity. but adapted to the needs of a snake bot. Incredible. It's intimidating in a way. I don't know why I say that, but to see that thing, I mean, a very fluid motion. Yes. It's not a jerky, robotic type of motion. Yes. So, I mean, look at that. Can I can I give a grip yep, there? You sure can. And it won't crush my hand? It, it probably won't. Wow, that's firm. I mean, that's a firm grip. Wow, so it's not a joystick. I was envisioning a joystick, but so, what do you call this? Well, we call it a high degree of freedom joystick. So okay. it's actually got 10 different joints that Dan controls with his arm. So however Dan moves his arm and hand, the robot is mimicking those moves. Those are the commands for the robot yes. to make those moves. Yes. He's actually simultaneously controlling every joint of the arm. Well, it looks very complicated, but you say that it's not that difficult. No, it's not that difficult to use. With a little practice, I might get the hang of it. Yes, a half an hour, and you'd be probably as expert as the rest of us. Ooh, I like the sound of that. Maybe 15 minutes. Can I give it a try? So how do I grip this? So you put your two fingers around the bottom here. All right, two fingers got those. Paddles right there, yeah. Yeah. And then another finger right here. And then fingers. And then put your thumb right on that one. Right. So each motion you do with your hand and your wrist now will be copied on the robot. Wow, look at that. I'll move it up and down. And now the fingers. Can Brady actually pick something up with it? Something kind of snake-shaped? Oh. Oh. Okay. And it just got loose again. We're all dead. Wow. 
Well, I, t I tell you what, I mean, I think I could do it with a little more practice. Oh, I'm sold. That thing is incredible. That does everything I need it to do to capture a venomous snake. Brady will take the snake bot back to South Africa to put it to the test. A couple of hours outside of Johannesburg, Brady gets word. A dangerous snake needs catching. He got the call from his old friend and problem snake catcher, Hannes Botha. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is it, this is it. Is it still here? It's still here, Brady. This guy called us over. He saw a snake go in this, this bathroom and close the door on it. Uh, Mamba. Are you yeah. sure that this is what you saw? Yes. Okay. Okay. Very dangerous snake. Very dangerous. Uh, the mamba. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if this is good or bad, but if there is a mamba in there, that is a very dangerous snake. That's the one snake that scares me. I mean, I don't know how you feel about a mamba. Mamba, pretty nervous when I see one, yes. The black mamba is the most feared of all African snakes. Oh, look, look, look. It's got its mouth open. That, there's where they call it the black mamba. Oh, look, he's gaping. Brady's caught them before. It's terrifying. Man, that thing really makes me nervous. They're big, often reaching three meters, armed with deadly neurotoxic venom, and scariest of all, lightning quick. I mean, look, that's a life and death situation. It's not something I want to go in after. Perfect opportunity for the robot. Let's uh, get the robot. Let's be very, we'll, we'll crack the door, see if we can see the snake and, and, and send the robot in. Send the robot in to do our job, keep us safe out here. So let's unload that bad boy and see what we got. Nice good. recovery. That's good, yeah. nice recovery. Brady's awesome. snake bot is ready to go to work. All right, this, my friends, <laughs> is the robot. Is that incredible? The engineers make final tweaks. We're good. Robot's fired up. OK, I'm going to open this door. I mean, the snake, let's, these guys need to back up. I mean, this snake could be right here. Look, as I said, if, if I run, you run. You ready? I'm ready. see anything. All right, let's do it. Let's do it quick. Let's do it quick. When I get the robot in there, you shut the door, OK? OK. OK, we're in. Look at that trash can. Okay, yeah. That's where it's at. Here, I'll bet you anything that snake is in there. Let's move that box. Yeah. Ah, there's nothing in that box either. Let's go over here and check this out. I'm gonna try to push that door open. Oh, nice. There's no sign of the snake. Oh, this is stressful. We've been all around the room. I, I think the only place we haven't looked 
are in those sinks yeah. and that one toilet. The robot can't get high enough to investigate, so Brady gives it a small camera to video the potential hideouts. Come on, baby. Let's see what we got going here. It's not in that sink. It's not in that one either. See, there's a grate in the bottom of that drain, so you know it can't go down the drain. OK, one more sink. It's not in the toilet either. And I thought for sure. Well, I thought it was going to be in the trash can, too. I guess <laughs> I'm really sure until we check each place. Could the snake have escaped? Uh, let's pull the robot out, and then let's go in cautiously and, and check the results of the robot and see maybe if there's a hole that you know the robot just overlooked. Yeah, open the door. I'm going to bring it out. Okay. There's no alternative but for Brady and Hannes to go in and look for the deadly mamba themselves. Nothing. Nothing in here. Damn. My heart just stopped. I mean, Hannes' phone goes off, and I'm on edge as it is. Good God, man. Turn that phone off. I told you that wasn't going to happen. Jeez. Nothing yet, either. There's nothing under the door. Nothing. No. There's nothing. What are those things? That's the system. Oh, for the water that flushes this thing comes from. Yeah. So these things have water in them. Is that open? Could the snake have slithered in there? There's no easy way to check. But Hannes's cell phone gives Brady an idea. We'll hold the cell phone up there, and we'll just take a photo, and then we'll, we'll check it out. It's much safer than sticking your whole head. Um, you ready? I'm ready. Yep. OK, hang on. OK, hang on. OK. Oh, go, go, go. The snake's there. Go. It's there. Hold. Look. It's there. It's there. It is a mamba. How are we gonna get it out? Let's uh, let's give the let's give the robot a stick. We'll just go in there. I think if we tap on that cistern, that, on that, cistern yes. that thing will come out of there like a jack in the box. Yeah. All right, let's uh, let's get the boom pole. We have a boom pole that we put cameras on. A black boom pole. And we'll give it to the robot. Right. Okay. Let's go. All right. Shut the door. He's out. He's coming out. He's I down. See him, I see him. I see him. You see him? Yep. Yeah. The mamba snakes across the windowsill. It's shedding. It drops into one of the stalls. It's dropping down. The robot heads after it, but there's a problem. We saw the snake go into that last toilet stall. The robot is in position. It's ready to grab the snake. We just don't have a snake. The robots looked over it. We've lost the snake, which is a horrifying proposition because that means I got to go in. I mean, we're going in right now. Hey, now you, look, you guys talk. You tell me if, that, if you see that snake. Hannes, you watch that monitor. There's a cistern in the stall like the one the mamba just came from. The cistern is flush up against the wall. Unless it went into the tank. The robot arm can't reach the cistern to check. It's got to be in that tank. Yeah. Is that plastic or porcelain? Plastic. 
I'm gonna pull the tank off. Okay, I just pulled the lid off of the tank. We're not sure where the snake is, but we think that it's in that tank. Hannes is gonna try to attempt to look over and just see if he can look down in there. Why don't you just stick your phone over there and take a photo? Stick it out there as far as you can. Okay. Man, if I tell you to go, you go. Yeah. Got it. Okay, let's look. Is it in there? I don't know. Oh my gosh, that is it, that's it. So we'll see the black thing in there. That's it. All right, I mean, you talk about a tough situation. I mean, I was hoping and praying that I wouldn't have to come in here and try to tackle this black mamba. We got a incredibly high-tech robot in here. The robot's in position, but the robot can't reach in that cistern and get the snake out. So Brady's going to have to do it himself. Um, this is so stressful, so freaking stressful, I cannot tell you. It is absolutely like trying to defuse a bomb. I mean, this snake bites me. The mamba is Man, coiled up at so the very bottom of the toilet tank. Go. I mean, that thing is faster than you can imagine. If the thing is head up, it's just in strike position. Yeah, the problem is it's down in the bottom of this bowl and I can't get down in there to catch it. That's a big snake. I mean, that, that mamba is probably, that's like an eight foot or eight and a half, maybe nine feet long. The problem is if I grab it too far back, it just comes up and bites me even though I have a hold of the snake. I mean, my tongs are only, what is that, three and a half feet long. That snake's eight and a half, nine feet long. All right, hang on, I'm going back in. Hey, now you guys really? Oh, this is just too tight. We're gonna have to goose it out of there. Hey, Hannes? Yes. Get ready with, I'm gonna just goose it. We gotta get it, it's too dangerous to try to catch in that tank. Okay. We gotta try to hook it out of there. The robot is no help now. Uh, it's uh, up uh, to Brady uh, and Hannes. Maybe we could, from this stall, use the ladder and, and use that long pole and try and uh, entice him to come out. All right, geez though, you're stuck though. Man, you're absolutely stuck in there on that ladder. Well, you get him. Hannes will have no escape route. If the mamba strikes him, he could die. But uh, you can see his head quite clearly. If he comes up, bang, I'm in there and we got him. Yeah. Okay? Okay. All right, Hannes, gently, okay. gently try to go in. Okay. Try to see if you can get some movement. Okay, the head is coming up here. The head is? Yeah. If the head comes up, then you can, you can get out of there once it's coming up. Just, you know, be careful, there be careful, there be very careful. Okay. Okay. Go get the bin, Hannes. Go get the bin, something to put him in. We got this snake. Bill will be not right behind me, are you? I'm gonna try to pull that out here into a safer position. That's fine. That is a big mama. That's a big mama. Whoa, 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 watch out, watch out, watch out. Here he comes. No, 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 back up, get back. Let's get a shot of this city first. That's a big snake. That is a big mama. Get him off my wrist. You hold the tail. Let's get him out of here and put him in the bin. You go first, you go first, go first. Get the lid. You ready? Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. One, two, here we go. Woo! Dang. But in some ways, the most dangerous task is still to come. The release. 
We now have the snake safely in here. Let's go relocate it. We'll take it out far away yep. into the country, release it unharmed. I mean, it's a spectacular snake. Terrifying snake. <laughs> Man, I, I'm glad you were with me. There aren't many people I would want to tackle one of these bombas with. Okay. I'll right back here and make sure it doesn't tip over. Just don't go too fast. Perfect mamba habitat out here. The scrub. These guys spend a lot of time in the trees looking for birds, small mammals. Right here. Let's try to go all the way back with it. The snake seems reluctant to leave what it thinks is a safe refuge. Is it going back in the bin? 